keep out the Huns. Perched on the tip of a peninsula, Constantinople had strategic advantages over the old capital, Rome, which stood unprotected and exposed. To keep out its enemies, Constantinople would need formidable defenses along its vulnerable western approach. The solution? The strongest, most sophisticated system of city walls ever built. Today, they are known as the Theodosian Walls. Ironically, credit for the ancient world's greatest feat of military engineering goes to an emperor who was a mere child when the walls were conceived, Theodosius II. Construction on Constantinople's defenses began when Theodosius was just 12 years old. It was his prefect, Anthemius, who deserves the real credit for masterminding the walls. Romans had been building walls for hundreds of years, but Byzantine engineers faced an even greater challenge. Constantinople sat on a fault, and earthquakes were a constant problem. But how to build something that would withstand a tremor? The answer, limestone mortar. In the West, Romans used concrete, which created a mortar of stone-like hardness that is rigid once it sets. Lime mortar has a little bit of give to it so that it will allow the buildings to settle without significant breakage. The Byzantines' ingenious design used limestone mortar alternated with bands of brick and stone. First, square stone walls were laid and filled in with brick rubble and mortar. To bind the layers of stone and mortared rubble together, bands of brick five courses thick were laid throughout the width of the walls. The hidden advantage of that also is that it provides a certain flexibility against minor earth tremors because the addition of the brick breaks up the solid face of the wall and allows the wall to absorb shock without shattering. Using this layer technique, the Byzantines built a massive barrier, more than 30 feet tall and as much as 16 and a half feet thick. It would have 96 giant towers reaching heights of 60 feet or more. But would it be enough to hold off the Huns?